Hey, there's so much we got to talk about, bro. Oh, I'm so mad. This fool Dallas, right? I'm calling him out. If he ain't here, I'm calling him out. Because I just got an alert saying he just logged on the Xbox Live. Told on himself. Busted. Busted. (laughs) He said, don't worry, I'm here. (laughs) Shama. Hey, y'all make sure to like. We need all that. Okay, guys. So, you know, we uh, I don't think we've ever went directly live to YouTube. This is our first you know, YouTube stream, yeah. Yeah, this is our first ever YouTube stream. So, uh, we're going to be doing this more often. Everybody's schedule is kind of cleared up. Life kind of, there's a balance to the force. Mm-hmm. This whole, like, adulting thing, we're kind of, like, getting the hang of it. Baby Yoda um, has been delivered. Yeah, uh, the package has been delivered. Uh, stakes were made. No, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I I just want to start off by saying welcome and thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you. Yeah, because real talk, um, you got this makes me feel like good. I'm grateful. We got a solid amount of people. I, I mean, Travis looked like a conscious rapper. He, Hey, he said I'm about to come out, you know. Uh, yeah, 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 you know. Queen, just <laughs> King. <laughs> oh my but man. No, I almost spilled something. <laughs> guys, there there's been there's been so much gaming news that's gone on since we've last talked, since we last went live. Um uh hey, Johnny Bro, I'm, I'm for sure getting carried this episode. I haven't been hey. doing anything. Well, okay. What? Um, well, oh, well, go ahead. What? Okay. So, have you watched any new movies recently? Well, first, let me do an intro. Guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Baron J67. I am T Jones. And we are the most consistently inconsistent show out there on the internet. <laughs> Adventures of the Black Nerds. Um, I'm real talk. Hey, what up, Aunt? Like real talk, I'm just so damn glad that you guys are here with us. Yeah, and um, we're gonna be spitballing and throwing a lot of different stuff out there and kind of just rattling off thoughts because you know, for me, I've been like buried into this crap, and Trav has been, as he just said, out the loop a little bit. It, it ain't gonna be no caring uh, them, nah, because it's all about us. No. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey, no, nah, I haven't watched it yet because uh, I'm a scaredy cat. And then two, um, I'm a, I'm a hold off for a bit because I got too much TV to watch. Um, I'm burning through anime, and we can even talk about that. But I'm Baron J67. This sir is T Jones. Yeah, once again, T Jones. Uh, I guess you asked what have we been watching. I guess we can start with uh, the Snyder Cut. Did you watch that? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. First question, and this is a a heavy one. Did we like the Snyder Cut because it was a lot better than um, the original, than the Whedon Cut? That's the only, yes. Yes. Clear cut, yes. (laughs) I I don't know. Like, after watching it, I was like, all right, cool. A lot more. Thank you. Thank you, wife, your clutch. Um, after sitting down and watching the Snyder Cut, um, I it yeah blatantly straight up it was just better. There was nothing more to it. The story, in a sense, stayed the same. Uh, I don't know where because we've already talked about this movie pretty much. It's kind of like. Nothing really new. They just gave a lot more backstory and a lot more minute things that like people who, um, people who people need it, right? People who aren't like super DC heavy fans, they needed that and they got it. I enjoyed it. Um, I'll tell you this: I enjoyed it, but like, I know a lot of people ripped on it. Like, I literally sat on a podcast with uh, Dorky Dev. Much love to those guys. On Shout them out. Um, our, um, headquarters. Much love to those dudes. Um, thank you for the invite. Shout out to those guys. Um, a lot of people were super mad because a lot of the characters aren't 
who the characters are at their core. I will say that. That okay. is the most un Batman Batman, and that is the most un Superman Superman. Yeah. Uh, I, like, okay. So that, that, and I, I, I guess having this conversation with people um, outside of the, you know, the podcast and the realm yeah, yeah. of entertainment, um, I get that, right? But at the same time, they wasn't the same characters in the first one, right? So you, no, they weren't. if you get, like, if you, okay. oh, go ahead. I, well, what I was saying is that if you just took it as, all right, cool, this is like the the renewal of this movie, right? It was a good movie. We knew, I, I'm not a Ben Affleck fan as Batman, right? Um, I got a lot of questions. They could have did a lot more better. I'm a huge Christian Bale fan as Batman, and that's why, um, you know, this movie didn't get that support it got from me then. But when they came out with the Snyder Cut, it literally was the movie we should have got. People would have still felt the same. People would have still said this exact same thing you're saying now, but story was a little bit better, you know. It was a lot better. It flushed it out. It connected well, yeah. it. It made sense. It was coherent. And I think if they would have went with this, I, I, well, they probably could have got two movies out of that, which would have probably did it worse. <clears throat> I don't think uh, two movies in with this with that movie would have did it any better. But uh, this could have been their competition to Marvel and I think that's how a lot of people looked at it but for me I didn't really enjoy the first one but I really enjoyed this one compared to the first one okay well you know what I don't want to harp on this too much because mm-hmm. we're, we're like damn I went about a month out from it <laughs> yeah. um more recent have you watched um I'm trying to I don't want to talk too spoilery have you been keeping up with Falcon and the Winter Soldier I have not. Okay, then we'll we'll pass on that. So, okay, um, let's just ask generic stuff because I wanted to, since you've been keeping up with it, you have been keeping up with it, right? Yeah. All right. So, how do you enjoy it? Um, I'm gonna be a hundred percent real. They are like heavily showing the life of a black person with some status, mm. and how the world still just sees. Falcon as a black man first, and mm. I didn't, I didn't think they would touch on it in the way they're doing. Um, and it's funny how a lot of the nuances within it is not for everybody. Yeah, uh, and and they do a good job of adding that nuance to where I'm sitting there and how I would react off of seeing something or something going down. That's how uh, the main character reacts. Okay, that's uh, that's how the world reacts. That's how. The world plays out that it's uh it's a pretty it does a really good job of of telling a a true like black man as a top tier superhero mm. like it does and it's not corny yeah it's not corny um like I think that's where uh, a lot of Luke Cage started kind of falling apart is it was it got super corny like the best part of your shows were the villains which isn't a bad thing. Uh, most of the time, your villains are what make shows. Because uh, if you got like, bro, I've been they, saying that since the Dark Knight Rises. Like, yeah, that that concept. If your villain is look at look at uh even Daredevil. the Dark Knight, the, the Daredevil. Yeah. Look, man, you go down the list of, of if your if your villain is something to to be dope about. Look at Black Panther. Like, it's just it is what it is. Your villain creates this, and I think. Going no, back, Robotnik was. I mean, Jim Carrey damn near made the movie. You see what I'm saying? But even yeah. going back, just a just a touch on this whole villain part. Stephen Wolf in the first Justice League was trash, right? You know, he was getting it, mad. Whereas with in this but, in this one, he was actually he actually was scary. But then they made Apocalypse chomped out like that. that mm-hmm. We <laughs> we. <laughs> We can really, and it's funny because I'm not a I'm not a lore heavy guy. Like mm-hmm. I don't, um, as long as it's not as long as it doesn't completely take me out of it. I know how to just sit down and enjoy a movie. Yeah, like I'm the guy who loves the Mortal Kombat movies, 
I enjoyed the shit out of the Super Mario Brothers movie. Like, everybody do the dinosaur. That's one of my all-time favorite cheesy songs. Um, he like, would say that. Yeah, like, I, I just, I love, I I can just watch a movie and enjoy it. Uh-huh. You know, even the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, even though people wouldn't consider those bad movies. But, um, you know, pizza, uh, you know, what is it? Patience is divine. You never pay full price for a late pizza. Like, yeah. um... I, I can just enjoy a movie. Mm-hmm. So um so for me, as in watching that, and then I like wide shots. Like I'm a sucker for wide shots. And uh somebody on uh on the Dorky Dev pod uh, podcast I did, they brought up a good point. Um I didn't know that Zack Snyder used to do music videos. Like that's actually where he got started. Now oh. I didn't look into it. I trust them because they know their stuff. Um but yeah, Zack Snyder was heavy on music videos, and that's like that's why it felt like you're watching a music video. Yeah. Like very, very cinematic wide shots, drawn out moments, over exaggerated moments that probably shouldn't have been over exaggerated. Um, and then it's funny how like that whole uh like the flash scene. I, I thought uh when he was saving uh uh what's her name? Not Nora. Yeah, Nora, right? Yeah. Not sure. I believe it's uh, when he when he saved her. Uh, I'm clearly tired, but when he saved her, that whole moment was dope until he did the whole creepy hot dog thing. Like I, I thought he was gonna splash the glizzy in the mouth. Yeah. I was ready for the I... worst, bro. <laughs> I was ready for hey, the worst. I was I... like, <laughs> I said, "Oh no!" Is he about to drop the glizzy down his throat? Is bro? he like? <laughs> Where were they going hey, with I that? Was like, no, they about to ruin this whole movie in this yeah. segment. Uh, it still was awkward, but I still like what they did, and it was cool. Um, outside of that, the hot dog part, that was just he mad. He slide the glizzy. I thought he was going to take it and go, Pause. like, and just, like, slide it, bro. Yeah. I, I just, oh, man. But um, but with uh, moving back to um, Winter Soldier. About? Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier. Or, sorry, not the Winter Soldier. The Fal- yeah, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Um, like I make a thing of it every mm-hmm. week. We uh, we meet up. My father in law comes over, and he's a big time comic book nerd. There you go. More more so than me. Uh, we do Wings Falcon and Wings. First it was Wanda and Wings. Now it moved over to Falcon and Wings. Okay. And so so you have watched all of Wanda Vision then? Yeah. Okay. Um, is, and, is it worth uh, me? Is it worth a Marvel fan going out and watch? Because yes. I skipped this one. Okay. No, you you should watch it and just know that the title really tells you everything. It's WandaVision. It's yeah. about Wanda and Vision. Mm-hmm. And I like that they really heavily laid into that and they didn't veer far from it. I kind of um, I guess I kind on the outside looking in cuz I haven't watched any of them. I just assumed that they all were parts of upcoming, you know, movies, right? Um it's that's hard. What everybody wanted. That's what everybody wanted. Yeah, because uh, how do you go from me being full t- obviously the times have changed we understand that and they have a whole marvel studio session or sector right um but how do you go from the big screen to you know hbo max like like this is where y'all at i come i can watch y'all weekly disney now plus. or disney plus right i can watch y'all weekly now i don't have to go and you know go to the well, that- the theaters oh. I will say this that um and uh freaking shout out to Morris got credit for working on uh I believe it was episode two of Falcon and Winter Soldier. Okay. Um yeah, much love Morris, you genius you. Um putting your business out there on Front Street. But um Um I think they're doing a great job of giving us triple A silver screen movie quality TV shows. Okay. Like um like Falcon and Winter Soldier for example, it, it if it has more the the thing about Wanda, okay. WandaVision is meant, was meant to be shot in like TV shows. Like it it literally each episode is built around a TV show, an era okay. a genre of TV. That's the gimmick of it. Yeah. I don't want the gimmick, but that's that's what it is. Um Falcon and the Winter Soldier, I feel like you're just getting a large snippet of a Marvel movie with each episode. Mm-hmm. Um, each episode stands on its own, tells a complete story. Um, 
of course it leaves you with wanting more like it does you know it, it doesn't it's not like you can just watch one episode and that's it no each one you need to watch in order and they do lean to the next but they do give you enough information to where you don't feel completely dissatisfied with each episode okay um, it, tell, it tells a full story each one yeah um, see that's what that's what i got from it i got from it that it was i felt that since it wasn't this is just me going based off of how i felt about it about both of them this is wandavision and falcon and the Winter soldier that you we were gonna lose something from it going to a weekly like uh distribute con or content that was distributed weekly Whereas with the movies, you knew what you're gonna get. Obviously, Marvel didn't always hit, right? But with with majority of their movies, they hit for people who were super Marvel fans. Um, so I felt like looking at it at that on that like you know that super like you know I guess uh, like. What would you say? Super like I- I'm focused in on that p- specific thing made okay. me not want to jump out there and watch it as fast as I could. I- I mean, it's not like I don't have it. I have it to go and watch it. I just haven't sat down to. Well, funny enough, we come we come. I'm talking like we're super old, but whatever. What we c- we are one of the last few groups of people who grew up watching weekly TV. Yep. Like I remember every Sunday night waiting for the Boondocks. Mm-hmm. Like, the Boondocks. Uh, yeah, like uh, you can go down the list. The Wire. Yeah, uh, yeah The Wire. Uh, mm-hmm. We, you know, we can really go down the list. Yeah. Um, hell, Dragon Ball Z dubs. Like you, you know what I mean? Like I remember every weekend. Like and if you're a super fan now, you're still doing that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, uh, but. Like getting, you know, we've been spoiled by Netflix. Netflix has spoiled me to a point to where I have no problem sitting back and waiting. Now, yeah. I will, for a lot of shows, like I will wait three, four weeks. Like I watched The Good Doctor with my wife. We'll wait until it's like five, six episodes, damn near a season, and then we'll watch it and then we'll put it down. And sometimes and I'll wait like one or two episodes just so I can have something to look forward to without, like, yeah. I, but what's crazy is the reason I bring all that up is this actually brought back that love for waiting week to week. Okay. Because I make it, I make an event of it. You mm-hmm. know, I think about how my parents, my mom would talk about like Dallas, like who shot Jr. Like doing yeah. the whole plea, like everybody sitting in front of the TV. Like it's actually really cool to be able to do that. Like we because literally, you know, we like, actually. Yeah, because we actually did that. We literally would go yeah. watch Boondocks come the week and talk about it for a whole oh, week. We could wait, bro. Mm-hmm. bro. <laughs> we we weren't even, we weren't texting, Facebooking, MySpace, MySpace, nothing. We got to school on Monday. Everybody was qu- doing the quotables, re- repeating the quotables. Did you see this part? Did you, we were doing that. So that could you I don't. Is that what it came out of that time oh, frame? Lord. It was. Like, if Twitter was the way it was then, mm-hmm. like, it would have been nuts, bro. The memes would have been stupid. It would have been disgusting. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Uh, like, how do you... It, how do you have side characters who are Charlie Murphy and uh, and freaking Samuel Jackson? Like, Snoop they're Dog. side characters. <laughs> yeah. The lethal interjection. <laughs> Bro, like, just like, just mad because your ass is old. But no, take <laughs> yeah. dog in courses on animated show music. Like, mm-hmm. bro, that show was legendary. Was but dope. But uh, what I will say is, it's brought back the love of waiting like weekly shows. Like, of course, I, you know, anime and whatnot. But there's so much. An- my anime backlog is so deep that I have no problem jumping around. Bro, like, you're never I'll catching up. Anime. Yeah. I'll, I'll watch an anime and be like, ah, it looks like I'm getting close to the end, and I'll jump to something else, mm-hmm. and or I'll go through my my deep dive and like find stuff that people are like, hey, you should have watched this. Yeah, like um, like I just finished watching Black Lagoon over again. Um, See, funny you, enough, you watching stuff over again, you never gonna catch up. That part too. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, uh, I'm not gonna get into that part, but um, with Black Lagoon, I wonder. If uh, as much as I love Cowboy Bebop, love Cowboy Bebop to death, like Cowboy Bebop showed me, episode five, Ballad of Fallen Angels, showed me what, how crazy and deep anime could be and is. Yeah. Um, but then, as an adult, 
going and watching uh, watching Black Lagoon, I'm like black lagoon hits a little more heavier because it feels a little more grounded mm-hmm. even though it's just as fantasy except there's just no space like they it's just on the ground it is yeah. you know you sh- a bar getting destroyed every week because they're shooting it up freaking uh warrior maid running around with a shotgun infused umbrella like it it's just as wild but um it's just grounded so it feels a little more to earth and then um I don't know. I, I guess I got a love for those weird like Seinfeld type shows where it's like a show about everything and nothing. It's it's about nothing for the main characters and everything for everybody around them. Yeah. Um, but um, now video games. Video games. I can, I can talk. I can talk shows all day. The gaming world, uh, folks, if you haven't been paying attention, has taken a big shift. Uh, the console. The console gaming world. And it's taken a huge shift. Um, Sony, in a lot of people's eyes, has been um, it, the the sentiment for Sony and Xbox has kind of flipped. Yeah. Um, and I, it is funny because I didn't think it would be so fast, even though it's been a slow build up to this point. But like the the immediate shift. The, the, like the the talks around it has been like within a month. I think it's had, well. Go ahead. You had Outriders day one free on Game Pass. No, or let me rephrase: day one, no extra cost on Game Pass. I don't like saying free because you pay for it. You pay for the service, so it's mm-hmm. day one, no extra cost. Game Pass, Game Pass console. MLB the Show comes out this Thursday, uh, free or no extra cost on Game Pass. A uh, exclusive Sony title for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, you have, and then there's whispers of something crazy going down because I still feel like Xbox is about to buy another studio. Like, okay, let's, which wouldn't let's, surprise let's, me. Let's let's put a pin co- and stay right there because what studio can you picture Xbox or Microsoft buying right now? I. Uh, it it would have to be uh, uh, not wild. Of... Yes, let's have fun with it, cause I, I got a wild one. That's I got. I can't. I don't want to pronounce it wrong. Um, <sighs> Japanese studio. Square Enix. No. And I, I have seen this before too. That's why I'm thinking of it because it does okay. make sense. Did they make Grant? The, uh, not Grant the Father. Did they make a uh, Metal Gear? What's the dude's name? Konami. Konami. Ah. Oh. Huh. I honestly, that's not far off. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna be real with you. My my three big ones, and I'm gonna include uh, Konami now because I kind of blanked on that. Yeah. Um. I. It's hard for me to imagine them selling, but I could see them completely like blowing up the world and buying uh, Square Enix, and still putting the games on PlayStation. That's the crazy. That's the funny part. Well, yeah. Uh, they. But they I would can, have to. They would have to. Nah, no, they. No, they don't. Then what's the point of uh crossplay then? True. And that actually it, take that back. That I'm backstepping. That is one. One thing that I can see happening, but Xbox is really pushing an ecosystem. Mm-hmm. We know that. Uh, we can we can talk this. It's been talked about a billion and a half times. There's a fucking there's an article. Last February of 2020, I quote it all the time. Phil Spencer said that he is no longer competing with consoles. He's competing with the Googles and the Amazon. That yeah. is his competition. And the moves that have been made make sense. Personally, I don't even think Xbox is really pushing to sell consoles. If I'm being 100% with you. I I think their real console in their eyes is Game Pass. Yeah. Well, like Because uh, you don't need anything else other than Game Pass. Man, which would make Pass sense. Which would make sense to go straight for Game Pass. Shit. Yeah. You could, you could use a PlayStation controller on Game Pass. Yeah. Just I mean, saying. and they don't care. You know? They want. They just want you playing. Yeah, uh, I, and they I, want you subscribed. I think that a lot of it has to do because somebody asked me, 
uh, are you more disappointed with Sony or are you more uh, um, proud of uh, Microsoft? And which one of those ha- would play uh, w- plays more in this time that we're in right now, right? I would have to say Microsoft because Microsoft has been doing a lot. Ah, Brian said, I didn't know the show was on Game Pass. I'm doing <laughs> Trev, bro, much love to Trev, man. Winterborn Games, please, 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 you guys go check those guys out. Yeah. I am so looking for. Look, hey, Trev, I I haven't really sat down and connected with you like that, bro. But let me tell you, this guy right here can explain to you and vouch. I love tactical turn-based RPGs. Uh, yes, he does. I play nothing but this guy. I play nothing but XCOM. I even got Dallas running, uh, running freaking uh, Wasteland Three with me. Like I absolutely love. So I'm excited for your title, bro. Man, I'm super excited. Um, but um, back to the point. Game Pass will be on Samsung TV. Oh yeah, bro. Yeah. Like Sam- Xbox, the Xbox app is going to be a standard app, like the internet app on tvs like yeah. like like twitch became a standard how uh um, youtube um yeah netflix all netflix. automatically you know it's gonna be funny okay have you guys been to like updated hotels any t- like within the last year Mm-mm. or two years because i know uh, i keep forgetting about freaking covid it's funny i don't even think of 2020 as like a real time space it just nah, we it skipped that experience um but like they built uh, a new hotel that we used to have to stay at for work um, when I would travel for work and you walked into the room, you took your key, uh, your key was like your key card was everything. You plugged it into this unit and then it turned on all the lights, activated the TV and the TV had your name and then it had a bunch of services on it. So it, mm-hmm. it had regular TV and then it had Netflix, it had HBO Max. Um, I, my point is you're going to get to a point where you're going to walk into a, a, a newer hotel and you're going to plug in your key card. And there's going to be an Xbox controller, and it's going to be a Game Pass app on the, t- or there's going to be an Xbox app on the TV. Yeah, and you're going to be able to log in, and that was a cool thing. You got to log into all your stuff if you wanted to, and it purged your, and you could purge your account on the way out. That, like as soon as you're checking out, you purge your account. That's and it what all hotels and establishments should do, because it, that's gonna, that's going to be the future. You know, I, like, I want to log in and I want to do whatever I want to log in. Yeah. Like if you have an Airbnb, it's the same thing. You know, you, you, you go to a, this, this home and they have their whatever services, whatever consoles or whatever, and you can log into it too. But there is no like super like, all right, well, we know today's out day. Do you want to delete all your information off this stuff? You know, things like that. You got to make sure you do it on your own. But outside of that though, I mean, going back to, X, Xbox Pass, I think that Microsoft has been doing way more. They've been, you know, they, they've they been playing into the concept of, you know, we go, we're for the culture. This is for the culture type deal, right? Um, and that's why it, you have to look. I, I don't tell, I tell people all the time now, like, don't, you're looking for, a, don't look for a console. Go get a PC. Go get a PC. Yeah. Go get a PC. To be real. Or a gaming laptop, if you're just getting um, a game. And this is and this is this is my recommendation though when it comes to that, because um, we make it sound easy because we've been dealing with them for so long. Mm-hmm. Um, um, we um uh, we we've been uh, the the PC thing makes sense for those who are looking for something a little more, um, who are a little more tinkering type, even though. You can buy a pre-built. It's still an experience. It's still a like I don't I don't like to throw the PC thing out there lightly because it it undercuts how much really goes into this. Let me let like, me tell you why specifically I say PC because the plethora of different things you should, you can do to it right, sure. and with Game Pass it becomes plug and play literally plug and play. Oh, well, see, okay, and um, Johnny Man asks, uh, brings up a great point. He said, how many hotel goers happen to be Xbox gamers 
though, uh, is the question, is such an investment worth a potential niche service? Well, funny thing is, well, let me tell you this. It wouldn't really cost much because on a business of that scale, most people who own hotels, fun, okay, I knew um, <laughs> they uh, the investment would probably be on Microsoft's part. Yeah, because Microsoft, and then funny enough, they can probably work in a deal because Microsoft is probably the one who does their back office. Mm-hmm. That's how embedded, like Microsoft just did the back office for GameStop. That's how they worked out that deal. Yeah. Like we're we're literally Microsoft is so embedded in businesses that them throwing controllers at them cuz that's all you would need. It wouldn't even be that much of an investment. Yeah. You could literally like it really wouldn't even cost much. It would they they okay, they landed uh, a HBO Max. I'm, the hotel I went to had HBO Max for free for everybody there. Yeah. They clearly landed that deal. I feel like the HBO Max deal would be more expensive than the Game Pass deal. Because mm. Microsoft has truly understood the and, and embodied the whole, um, like, the whole, um, let me just make it cheap and everybody will buy in. Yeah. Shotgun. Let me just throw it out there. Because, yeah, they could charge more. Yeah, they could be like, hey, if you want to play this game, you got to pay an extra five bucks for the premium version of Game Pass. It's they almost could. shocking that they don't charge more. And you know why they don't? Because they understand the power of numbers. How about I make it cheap and get it into more homes? Because at, at this at this point, they know you got TVs already. Because even if you and don't it, buy, even if you don't buy a Microsoft console or Microsoft equipment they know you got a smart tv in your house you know you got a smart tv in your crib we know you got the phone we know you you know we know you have a controller bro you know how many people in my discord list will show that they're running a game on their freaking phone yeah like they're playing a game on their phone and how many people i including myself have the attachment for the controller where you snap on your phone so i have game pass right and uh i'm gonna be the first to tell you that the concept is dope but I'm not doing that. I cannot. I was playing. I got a brand new Samsung ta- tablet in there. And the games I want to play. And it's because I'm, I guess you can call me a hardcore gamer when it comes to that. Input lag. All that shit bothers me. And I'm bothered by oh, it. Yeah. But I was in there playing, I believe it was Minecraft with my daughter on there. On there and it was a fun experience. It was dope to be able to sit there and play right at our kitchen table and, and sit around there and, and pass a controller back and forth between each other. Um, but that is the way to go. If you're a person that needs, like for me, I'm not going to even lie anymore. For me to enjoy gaming, I have to be right here. Like, this is it. If I'm not right here, I'm not going to play it. But don't let that undermine Game Pass because Game pa- Game pa- what Game Pass offers is dope. I don't don't think I have the right equipment to do that just yet. I haven't tried my phone, which I want to try my phone. So sure. my phone is that because I do have a newer phone, and I would hope that it gives me everything I would need it to do. Because internet wise, it loads fast. I don't have to wait. Everything is just right there in my face. Controller, Bluetooth, straight to the phone. I'm good. And they just added, uh, um screen button controls for a lot of these games you don't even oh yeah play. i've seen that too they, I've seen that like, as well. i think it's over i want to quote you know don't quote me but i want to say it was over like 50 games they just did not too, like this couple weeks last yeah. couple weeks um what what's so uh what's so wild about about the game pass mobile for me my issue is i my cell phone service is crap yeah um that that's my only issue so like the streaming portion of it my my like my phone, my my service is just bad, bro. Like yeah, I, I got bad service. Um, now when I'm in a place where my phone works great, then yeah, now yeah. it's like okay, like it is worthwhile. So my phone service is so bad that I haven't been able to fully take advantage of it. And then if I'm at home, I'm gonna I'd rather play on my console or on my PC. Exactly. Like so, I was what just game- running Battlefield Five. Okay, uh, on off my PC, like through Game Pass. Okay. Because the EA Play is now part of Game Pass. Mm. Oh, I think, uh, especially since the uh, the Kojima announcement that there are not announcement. Let me stop. 
the Kojima rumors that they're supposed to be having their game launch on Game Pass yeah. are exclusively on Xbox. I don't know. Well, both kind of the same thing. Um, I personally think that... Um, I don't know where I was going. Game Pass is the shit. <laughs> like, I, that summed I mean, it up. <laughs> yeah, Game that Pass is up. worthwhile, man. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I feel if somebody... If you have a decent p oh that's what i was getting to um you play uh ubisoft plus or whatever it's called you play plus the ubisoft stream the ubisoft streaming service they're gonna i think they're gonna be on game pass um i think uh we're also gonna get um that i think we're gonna i think game pass is gonna get that kojima game um and i wouldn't be shocked if uh xbox ended up buying either sega Square Enix or um, you brought up Konami. I didn't even think of that. Mm-hmm. I, it wouldn't shock me. One one of those getting bought. Yeah, because um, I thought of them, especially because uh, let's let's take it international, right? Let's let's really push it that way. You're pushing it to where where it's at now, right? Right now, it's the the biggest thing in gaming, the easiest thing to get into in gaming. Because All I gotta do is get this cell phone. Mm-hmm. That's right. Th- and even if you don't. But I that you didn't do so much shit in my face. I'm not gonna pass this up. FOMO is real. Nah. People is it, people don't do not underestimate FOMO. Bro, I'm almost about to be there again. <laughs> FOMO is real. I, I bullshit just, you not. I broke out my PlayStation Three. See, I broke it out. I about to upgrade the hard drive with it. I downloaded all the games I bought because they not gonna take See? that from me. <laughs> See, like FOMO I, it, like is real. real. The, we actually did a FOMO episode, mm-hmm. and I'll make sure to link that somewhere. Yeah. Um, but any, uh, it it it's real, and I think that Game Pass is taking, uh, they're taking that into consideration because it's like, let me just shove it at you. Hey, if you like sports, hey, we got this, we got that, we got. Th- oh crap! Brand new Outriders. There for you. Have you played uh, Outriders? I have not. I'm going to tell you this. I was waiting for Outriders, you to ask me that. Okay. Outriders, and we jump topics like crazy, guys. There's, there's no rhyme or reason to what we do. Mm. Um, Outriders, is the best description I heard is it is extremely fun beside its, uh, you know, um, despite itself. Yeah. Um, In all of its errors, in all of its problems, and the glitches and the mission tracking not working well and uh the the servers being crap situation um i am having fun Mm -hmm. and it's it's so weird like uh i've been running with fame uh shout out to level one gaming the family Mm -hmm. um shout out to tone deaf network yeah, we, um, we we got a lot of shouting out to. We got man. a lot of Tone shouting out. Tom probably don't even know we over here. Yeah, I My probably should have dropped the link to Tom. Tom, I'm sorry. <laughs> Please don't fire us, man. It's actually it is in the description below though. Um, and um, it it's so wild how much fun I've been having. Like mm-hmm. I, the enemies are intense. Is it because it's the new? Battle... No, let's because no. I'm going to tell you what I told somebody else. Everybody. Yes. Tra- Trevor said it best. Would I pay $60 for Outriders? No. That's why I tell people, if you don't have okay. Game Pass, don't go buy it for full price. Don't do that to yourself. Listen. Because the problems in the game, if I paid full price for it, would be enough for me to want my money back. Mm-hmm. But by me not paying for it extra, it's a enjo- super enjoyable experience. I'm going to tell you right now. When when the first week when I our writers came out, which yeah, it was last week. <clears throat> um, when that game came out, it the it sounded like Anthem, right? It sounded like week one Anthem. Everybody was geeked, it was new, everybody enjoyed it, they enjoyed the farming, they did this, that, and the third. I'm not comparing Outriders to Anthem, right? I'm I'm just saying that this is what... enough, it's a fair comparison. Oh, really? Is that bad? Um. For, oh, well, okay. Let well, me rephrase. No, 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 no. Keep let me, going. Keep going. Let me rephrase because I said that is that bad thinking anthem now, right? Not anthem then because it was a totally different experience. Um, 
But that's what it sounded like. It, so- it sounded like that when people were, were doing reviews on it. I watched a couple of reviews from a couple of YouTubers that um, I deem, you know, uh, th- their opinion matters to me. And uh, it's, excuse me, it sounded just like that. So I I was a little bit like, oh, okay, cool. Well, hopefully, once again, I always end these this conversation off with the same thing. Hopefully these community managers and these developers look at what people are saying and make the proper adjustment. Because if you don't, Anthem 7.0. That's what's going to happen to your game, and you do not want that. Especially when there's so much in that game. I haven't played it yet. Well, I haven't played the release version yet. But it the way people are talking about everything that's in the game, everything that you can do, all of the bills that you can make, um, the enjoyment people are having now, man, they better take that, fix what they need to fix, and run with it. Okay, let me tell you off the rip. It's funny, because I caught a lot of shit on Reddit, because I wrote an article... Um, I will say Outriders community team has been awesome. They are very honest with the community playing it. Trevor is absolutely right. Um, let me let me say this. <sighs> um, I wrote an article, and I keep plugging Level 1 Gaming because it's family, um, but I wrote an article about what Outriders needs to survive. Mm-hmm. I mentioned that the price needs to be lowered. Which, in my opinion, that's exactly what Game Pass did, lowered the buy-in. Yeah. Um, They need to uh, have quarterly content. Um, They need to uh, get rid of those dumbass cutscenes. And not even the major cutscenes. There's literally... They they literally... the be- Shout out to Mr. Matty Plays. He said that this would have been the greatest Xbox 360 game of all time. Hmm. Really? That like just to just to give you the scope, because a lot of the there's a lot of issues they run into are a lot of things that are in the game that feel very old, like two generations ago. Mm-hmm. Like loading it, you will literally walk up to an, an area, and it'll be highlighted. And okay, now you got to go through there to get to the mission area. Yeah, to jump off the so, little cliff. Ugh. So it will <laughs> the screen will go black. It'll be loading, and then a cinematic moment of you crawling through that space will happen, and then another loading screen will pop up. Yeah, and then you're in the area. So they, so they, they did. They just stuck with what they said about that. They just stuck with yes. that and ran with it. Okay. Yeah, and they said they're not getting rid of it. Um, and they they were saying that it was disorienting. I didn't look too much into it. I just wrote my piece. I I didn't want to do too much deep diving because crazy enough, what a lot of people don't know, and correct me if I'm wrong, I I, I know for sure we got Trevor in here. Um, the game they have no real plans on expanding the game. Like it's not a games as a service, mm. but the game's always online. Yeah, so uh, that's bad, right? Um, yes. That's okay. Bad. In this okay. era, this time, that's bad. Yes, and this is this is why. I'm worried about the legs of the game Mm -hmm. because your sweaties are going to destroy this game. Your sweaties are going to kill it. Um, YouTube is going to kill that game. Yeah. Min-maxing it to death. Mm -hmm. Um, Like, we we already know. Like, I've been actively avoiding a lot of videos. Like, one thing I did, um, like, one moment I, uh, one video I did go and watch, though, and it came up across Twitter was like, um, don't kill yourself farming the higher world tiers because mm-hmm. the game. Um, I I will say the cutscenes are less noticeable on the Series X since it loads faster. But if you're playing with anyone on Xbox One, it's very noticeable. Oh, bro, I got an OG. I got an Xbox One S, so I'm feeling it. The yeah. pain is there. Um, but I'm through all of this crap. I'm having fun, and it's really you know me, bro. I'm not a graphics junkie. Yeah. I'm not a uh, um like that's not who I am. I'm not looking at a game. I do fall for different art styles. I will say that. Like certain art styles of games, like um I'm playing and this is kind of jumping topics a lot actually. I'm playing Bravely Default 2. This is the first game I've played with like that chibi art design. Uh-huh. With, like the big head, little body, like not really detailed, like they look like pocket versions of people. 
usually that deters me. No matter how great the game is, no matter how much praise the game's got, I usually like avoid those type of games because that art style just doesn't grab me. Yeah. Um. I, and then, like for example, this Gaia Six, I don't like when turn-based RPGs go to that full 3D, especially classic ones like this guy, when they go to like the full 3D models. I feel like it kind of, like even Final Fantasy Tactics Advance to Final Fantasy Tactics Advance 2, like I, I just, that's not my thing. Yeah. Um, it, I don't prefer it. So to see, to, to, uh, for the, that's the only thing that gets weird for me. Like I get nitpicky about that when it comes to like graphics and design. Yeah. Um, but the game feels good. The maps remind me of old school, like Gears of War. Like, is like that, Gears, Gears 1. I heard somebody say that, and I thought, is that more the maps or is that more the movement? Both. Okay. Um, because both. the, the it, movement in that game is, is, is super, like, you're, it's built for you to cover. Like, you can't just run around... Nilly but that, but but that's the point of the game, though. Mm-hmm. The point of the game, like you usually will do bad playing and cover. Okay. Because oddly enough, like the enemy mechanics are, it, it's so funny because the enemy are smart. They flank you. They rush you. <laughs> Big ass um, grenade area radius. Radius. Now let me talk about the, <laughs> that. That was going to be the negative I was yeah. going to talk about. Okay. How is it that? It's such a cheap ploy. Like, why is it that this random NPC can chuck a grenade from halfway across the map to perfectly land in between me and my cover, like <laughs> on the on the nose? It's like, come on, bro. Like, like add some dynamics to it. Like, add like why is the grenade placement perfect? It, it's it, and then why is the grenade right? Ra- yeah, bro. No, no, when I'm no. telling you, it's perfect. It's perfect. That grenade radius is stupid. Uh-huh. Like, hey, you think you're doing something, and it's bombs away, and it's right on your nose, uh, no matter where they throw it from. You're going to catch this grenade, bro. Yeah, and it, it's glitchy. Like, we were fighting a boss, and um, they got trapped in an obelisk. Like, it was like they got trapped in a, in a pillar. Mm-hmm. Like, they was, like, hiding and covering and, like, fusing to the pillar, but then we knocked them out of it. And it just there, there, there's been some weird moments. There, there was even a glitch where we couldn't even like beat the boss. We had to fight him one on one, like um, for the game to move forward. But, yeah. but, but, but through all, and this is why I would say don't buy it. Like if you gotta buy it, I'm like no, 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 don't do it because I couldn't recommend a game in this build for money. But okay. if you got Game Pass, download it. Like yeah. if you got game console, if you got Game Pass on console, download it and play it. You'll have fun. You'll have a good time. Um, you know, as long as you don't experience like it, it's it's definitely worth a play, especially if you don't have uh, have to have an extra buy in. But if you got to go out and buy it, definitely wait until this is in a bargain bin. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it's it's I'm telling you the. The, okay, if I had to cheaply describe it to somebody, I would say you're Diablo answering Trevor, through, right? Yeah. Okay. So, um, so Trevor said, "Yeah, our writers definitely has some jank, but both in a good and bad way." Yeah, and I think that's kind of what you were saying, right? That's that's exactly yeah. What, yeah. It, it's 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 such a strange. It, it's it's a pleasant experience. Like it legit reminds me of the days. Like, remember we used to run a- Aegis Wing, Aegis Wing with mm-hmm. uh, Brandon and them on yeah. Xbox 360 yeah. for hours on end. Like, it was the greatest game on Earth, and it literally was like an old school scroller, like ship scroller, like, like it. it but we played that for hours. Raiden. Like, we ran a. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Like it was like Raiden. Like it, that's that's how it was, and you just played it for hours. It wasn't the most technically advanced game. Uh, Exactly, and the reason I really enjoy it, and I don't have as many gripes about it, is because I didn't pay any extra. Mm-hmm. Now, if I had to come out of pocket, no. I'll, first off, I'm gonna be real with you. If I had to come out of pocket, I wouldn't have bought it. Not buying it. Yeah. Um. 
but not at full price. I, I would have had to catch it for like maybe thirty, maybe twenty five. I'd I'd have picked it up. Yeah, but see, I'm at a price, point. I'm at a point now with video games that I don't mind waiting. Like I have oh, yeah. no, I have no quarrels with sitting down and waiting. As you can see, I got, I don't have none of the new consoles. I have no problems waiting. And I think it's because a lot of it just doesn't make sense to me, right? Um, to be honest, the only game out there that I'm going to buy, even if I never play it, is Destiny. That's it. That's the yeah. only game that'll get money from me blindlessly. Outside of that, or, and then the, the, the my subscriptions, right? My Game Pass subscription, my uh, PlayStation Plus subscription. Outside of that, I don't want to hear it. I gotta your your game got to be so great out the gate, it gotta has it's, it's gonna have to blow me away, and I have to and I'm probably gonna have to be a fan of it for me to drop that. But outside of that, I'm not gonna do it. And I, I, the majority of the mistakes come from, you know, when they start to release these games and when they start talking about them because then they start adding on the sauce like you you're doing too much. It, it's been a while for me. Um that I had a day one purchase that I bought with my own money mm -hmm. like that. I, Cause you know, I do reviews and whatnot. I haven't done one in a bit, yeah. um, but I say a bit and it's only been like a couple weeks, but, um, I, um, I'm trying to think the last day one game. It might've been Pokemon shield. Why was that? Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think day one. And Switch ain't even like your duty. That's like your. Yeah, that's that's you know, just. I don't even. You're never yeah. gonna see me play this. <laughs> and I can't believe I bought. I, I, bro, I ain't gonna lie to you. I looked at my. I put up like finally like put out all my Switch cases. <sighs> I got a lot of games. You got a lot of games. I said that. Yeah. Yeah. What bro. what's what new what new game did you buy? Uh, for the Switch. Uh. I bought well, the collectors. Look, look, look at this face. Look at the I bought the, collect, I bought the collector's edition of Hellpoint. Um, of course, even you though. Did. Now let me tell you. Yeah, I bought nah, the collector's that's... edition of Hellpoint. Of course, you and did. it's funny because Dallas was clowning me. He was like, "You probably ain't never gonna open it." I was like, "Probably not." Nah, like, I, I, I'd probably see. buy another one before I'd open it. Um, <laughs> and then uh, I picked up. Um, yeah, it's bad, man. And then of course I still got like. Two or three games that are unopened. <laughs> so S Max said uh, he sounds so <laughs> defeated. He bro, because I got a problem. I got a problem, man. I got a bad habit. Um no, you ain't the only it, one it, though. Don't don't let them fool you. Yeah. Hey, I, no, it, and he got he 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 won too. He the same way. Exactly. I'm the same way. Yeah. Yes, oh yeah. Me. I'm hey, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> ain't he the one who had a whole new next gen console sitting in the box? He got all of them. He bought all of them. He bought the yeah, digital just, version too. And he just just sitting in the box, <laughs> just cause. Hey, this might be the first generation of consoles where I get a custom one, not a custom, but a special edition. Yeah, well, because at this point I can wait now. You might as well. Like, and let. I'm. This is. This I'm is waiting what for I'm, Sony to announce the SoCom remake, and then they go and remake. The, the collector's edition PlayStation Five with it. Okay, cool. I, I'm copying that. I've got it. I'll buy that. No problem, bro. I'm waiting for. Um, it'd be dope if we got a Final Fantasy Sixteen PlayStation Five. Mm. I'd buy it. Day one, I'd get no it. No questions um, asked. As long as the design is cool. Mm -hmm. Uh, which yep. the I think the Final Fantasy 15 design was dope. Oh, yeah. card collection. You want to see a product? I can show you my Funko. Oh, oh, I legit got to a point where I had, look, you're talking to a, a monster. Oh, a monster. my bad, Mac. He bought me one and I still ain't sent the buddy for it. It's been like a year. Oh, <laughs> it's been like a Bro, year. I, I legit got a box of Funkos. Like this, this box right here. You're going to need a bigger room. Well, no, I'm, I'm I'm just flipping shit now. Like, bro, look what I got. Like, I just just like I got the Witcher three. I got the Geralt, and and, and then ooh, last uh, thing, how you feel about them uh, wrapping up uh, recording the Witcher? Uh, season I'm two? I'm excited, bro. Mm. I'm that show that was really dope, and it was super. It was closer to the books than anything else. Mm -hmm. 
and um, I'm excited to see where this is going to go. Um, funny enough, whenever shows come out with books, series that I haven't finished, I tend to kind of stop because I want to see it played out, yeah. and then I want to read it. Because I, I, I get you, you, I get mad when I like read something. I'm like, why'd they cut that out? So like, after they... after hearing you talk about when we reviewed season one, right? Um, I started to think, and I started to say to myself, I think I'm one of those believers that that think that people who or like not only developers but people who are making movies on like games and things like that with lore inside of it, they should just scrap trying to keep get everybody up to speed. And just stick to the lore because, uh, or stick to adding the lore in the way that they want to add it. Like, let the story tell itself. Yeah, because because people, regardless, the information is out there. People are going to ask those questions. People are going to go to Reddit. People are gonna people are gonna review it. Like, imagine how many people watch shows and then go watch reviews of shows or do or conduct reviews on their own. See what I'm saying? So, like, I don't have a problem with it. Because I didn't know too much about The Witcher, right? Um, I didn't play the game. All the information I got on it was with you or was, were from you. So if you're telling me, I'm asking you certain questions and you're breaking it down to me, I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And then randomly one day I'm on Reddit and people are talking about it and I'm sitting there watching people discuss this thing and it's it's all clicking to me like, oh, yeah, that's what happened and yada, yada, yada. So, um, yeah, I think they need to um, either use the lore Right. Hopefully they use the lore and then they can break it down and explain it so everybody can understand it or they can let people think, let people, you know, think outside of the I was going to say outside the box, but outside of the. The show itself. Um, Funny enough, who who probably did a little more of that than anybody else without excluding the last season was Game of Thrones. You know, mm. we, we harped on it. We we went down that road. Yeah. And there is video proof of me calling how they were going to end it. Um, only thing I was wrong about was they joked about making a democracy. They didn't actually make a democracy. Mm-hmm. Spoiler alert. Mm. Um, everything else I got right. I called it. Just like just like I called Kong versus Godzilla. Just like I called. And, that, and I'm not, you, you know what it is? It's not that I'm. I think I'm some super genius. It's nah, that he a think lot he's of stories. Super genius. Who you think you is? Who you think right? you is? No, what it is is most stories are based on like rooted on stories of the past. Nah, you like took things, a class. Like, you took a class and then figured it all out and said this is what they go by the guidelines. They I do, this. and it's <laughs> this is why when I'm shocked, I'm pleasantly surprised. Like when I watched Gone Girl. I'll never forget it. Gone Girl was the most I did not know that was going to happen story, and I enjoyed the shit out of it. Mm -hmm. It made me look at my wife sideways for a good month. Like, I didn't even feel comfortable being next to her. I was like, you crazy, just like in this movie. (laughs) Um, I love being surprised. Yeah, I really do. When you can can just surprise me, so, like, like, okay, let's, um, um, what's it called? No. No, it's not flexing, nah, Trevor. He it's flexing. Not flexing. He flexing. You're no, right, Trevor. Don't no. You know what other movie really surprised me uh, was uh, Detective Pikachu. That movie surprised me. Hmm. I didn't think that's where it was going. If you guys have, I don't want to. Sp- I mean, I guess I could spoil. No, I don't want to spoil it because once you know the ending, it kind of ruins the whole ruins movie. It, yeah, just leave it alone. Um, like you, you know, you that, could because that could was a- say that about all movies, but no, like if Detective- I tell you the ending it or the like detective like pikachu ab- was dope because it went away from how the game is actually is well most of the games are right and that's how i would imagine life would real po- would pokemon yeah. would be so the pokemon like the, when he was out in the field and he ran into a moral way, like a freaking uh not a moral way, uh Q- Q-Bone, Q-Bone. Mm-hmm. and he just beat his ass out in the wilderness out in the woods Bone in the back rush. of his house he that boomerang. That is real. I, that's what I imagine. People think living with Pokemon be cool as shit, and then you mind your business, and then all of a sudden you're going across the street, and a fucking Arbok goes across the highway, like he get chasing hit. a goddamn Pikachu. He get hit, like, bro. Like, <laughs> like, bro, could you like could you imagine what type of insurance you'd have to have in the in the Pokemon world? It wouldn't even be acts of God. If actually there would be acts of gods, it'd be acts of God type Pokemon. Mm-hmm. Arceus. Yeah, acts of Arceus. 
Yeah, we got to worry the, about there's a Kyogre out there somewhere. Yeah. Just swimming like, around. <laughs> bro, hey, did you did you hear that breakdown? Uh, that Cubones are basically Charmanders whose parents died? How so? Because Charmander's tails are lit by their, their parents. And um, the parent, the the skull of the freaking Cubone is just a, 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 a Charizard. So they just ground, they just ground. So type. you got they a Charizard ground type, and I thought they supposed to die when they flame is out. So you telling me that Cubone's a zombie then? Ah, ah. How often is it referenced that Pokemon die, except in the manga? Wasn't it referenced in Gen the 1? The first game. The first game. Yeah. It was it died. <laughs> it, but that they, was it. But they had to change it up because they even they even took the game corner out. Now, this... Yeah. This... Of course. This is just a random, like, deep thought. And I was like, it, the math checks out. I could I could live in that world where... Nah, Cubone see, I, mm, start, see, nah, I, can't, I don't, yeah. I don't want a zombie oh, Cubone. Oh, before you get on your high horse, I don't want a zombie. I don't want a zombie. Charizard ain't Cubone. even a fucking dragon type. So let's stop right there. He's a dragon type in X and Y. Relax. He's a special version. Relax. He becomes dragon and he looks cool. Why? Why are you yelling? No, because you, so you get on your Pokemon high horse. Because you get on your Pokemon high horse. I know why are you so upset? Oh, your uh, nose got up in yeah, the air. Yeah, but you don't. But you don't. You but once again, you don't. You don't want Charizard as a zombie. As as a uh, as a zombie, <laughs> you don't want Char Charizard as a dragon type. Why would you want that? Why would you no. want that? Now he now he's like no. Well, no but you was making an argument that can't happen in this po weird, crazy ass Pokemon. But Charizard world. is alive though. You're telling me Cubone is a zombie? No, no. I'm telling you, Cubone is a Charmander. That did not get his tail. But he, lit how is he a Charmander? If he ain't died. got no, but he's supposed to die if he ain't got no flame on his tail. He's a zombie. That's why you can only get, only catch the Marowak inside of the the damn the little uh, the little memorial they, for they damn Pokemon. Tower. And yeah, they reference it. Well, that Gen One. That's Gen One. Listen, I'm not going down this path with you. It's late. My back hurt. You over here talking about Cubos and Charmanders. You're confusing me. Don't ruin my childhood, sir. Okay? Don't ruin my childhood. <laughs> hey, on a on a side note though, back back to uh he said yo wow. But back back to the whole movie thing. I, I like being <laughs> TJ surprised. Ready to fight. <laughs> man. I love uh, you. Yeah, he do be ready to fight, man. Disrespectful. Over here, Pokemon. Um, hey, but but no. I like being surprised with movies. Um, I will say that I enjoyed Godzilla. Uh, Kong versus Godzilla or Godzilla versus Kong. I forgot what it's called. I enjoyed it, but I was a little butthurt that I, I called it. I was like, damn it. I was hoping I was going to be wrong. Mm -hmm. I didn't watch it yet. I, I, okay. I, that's why I'm trying to talk very vaguely. Yeah, so leave me alone. Just know that I was right. Just, just leave me alone. Yeah, just say you that. You going to leave me alone? No. You going to leave me alone? Uh, Gen 1 is the best gen. Don't at me, Trevor says. I'm not going to argue with you. Some of my favorite Pokemon to this day are from Gen 1. Now, your, your Barrett Bar here is, says Gen 2. Uh, trash! <laughs> Every, everything that makes the Pokemon community what it is trash. came out of Gen 2. Trash. Hidden values. Eggs, trash, nature, all of that came out. What are you talking about? Trash. <laughs> dip. He dip, dip, dip. <laughs> On the other note, have did you show the stream your 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 uh, Pokemon poster? Yeah, let me see. Your audio. I thought your audio me, went out. Let me, let me fix it. No, nah, this no, nah, this dude man. Make Why are you always Everything. so mad, man? No, nah, no. Nah, the man, that. listen. The man said what he said. The, <laughs> Trevor said, "Gen one, I'm not gonna argue with him." I'm, I'm not. Just, I was just Trevor letting him know. You said Gen two. <laughs> just let them know. I just was. I was nah, arguing with hey, you. Hey, no. It, this. I'm gonna stop. I'm not even gonna go there with you. <laughs> 
Johnny Man no. said my favorite is from Jim Wood, so I gotta agree. <laughs> ah. He likes Magnemite. That's why, because Magnemite is his all time favorite. I'm not gonna argue with can't that. You can see it because of the damn lighting. Let me see. Ugh. Oh, it's up on the wall. You show him, show him another day. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. I got it all up on the damn wall. Man. But you know what? I really appreciate everybody sticking around and, and chilling with us today. It's our first one back in, damn, a This while. was actually lit. I don't even know yeah. what episode we on, to be honest. Yeah, we, we I, I want to say we're like 70-something. Yeah. The Which is crazy. That means there's over 70-something hours of us talking shit. Uh, yes. Probably like, like 30 minutes short. I know one episode... That I can remember was only like. But then we got sidebar episodes. We did a couple of interviews. Oh, true. Facts. Facts. I wonder how Mew Mew and them is doing. Mew Mew, we interviewed Chris. We interviewed. Mm-hmm. Um, we interviewed quite a few people. We got to get uh, some more people on here. Yeah. Now that uh, my computer's all good now, my computer. Yeah. Yeah, one. So, point. so just to let y'all know what I was dealing with, I bought this high end gaming laptop and it's trash. So the, to give you the little story, the the backstory on it is I only had a hundred and twenty gigs of SSD space on this laptop, right? And for everything that it takes to game on here, uh, it's about a hundred and twenty gigs, or not game, but to to stream on here, it's about a hundred and twenty gigs on here that I need for this, right? But you're also not accounting for the operating system, which took up 75% of that. So the problems I was dealing with was I didn't have no space for stuff. I kept having to delete stuff. And I also have a backup uh, hard drive on here. 100, uh, 100 t- uh, one terabyte of space on here. And I could not use that, switch that to my main hard drive. But I've upgraded my RAM. I've upgraded the storage space. That's why we're able to do this podcast today. Yes, sir. Yeah. And I, I'm terrible. I, I never want to engineer. That's what. That's my big issue. That's probably another. Um, and, and it's not like he can't do it. He for sure can do it. <laughs> mm-hmm. There's that laugh. I, <laughs> hey, look, hey. There's that laugh. Hey, hey, bro. Everybody will tell you, man, I'm quick to pass off responsibilities. Like, I, I don't oh, want to do it. You want to do it? You got it. Yeah, here you go. Bro, you like, I, I'm me. so quick for that. You're not telling uh, me nothing I don't I'm, know. Look, I'm the reluctant hero. Like, mm-hmm. I don't want it. <laughs> he said, oh, oh, we streaming tonight? Oh, man, I got to fix it. I got to eat. Hey, hey, one time he was like, uh, you know what? Let me try to. Um, nah, never mind. I'll catch y'all later. We, we'll, we'll do it next week. <laughs> hey, I'm terrible. I'm the worst. Uh, I, I'm the worst. I'm like. But uh, we have fixed all of or our issues. Um, YouTube is where we'll be streaming at from here on out. Uh, yeah. So we've made it official. Uh, you'll see some changes to the layouts. We do have some layout changes. Um, and we'll be making those, up, uh, those updates as we go along. So next week, we'll for sure be here. Be here. Yes, sir. So... Um, I think that's it, man. We hit it, man. Everybody that's in here, I appreciate you guys once again for tuning please. in. Man. Like, subscribe, share. Hit it lets us know what we're that we're doing something decent. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I mean, even though I would talk to nobody, because believe me, we've had plenty of those. Oh, yeah. Um, and crazy enough, we used to do these pre-recorded. Like we, so we really were just talking to nobody. Yeah. Except each other. Like, just... It was just just as it's a, it is hard to imagine now to do recorded episode like that's that's a damn that I couldn't do it or no I could yeah. do it we, I mean we had to yeah, yeah of course we yeah. could do it it's just that I I'd rather this now because of the interactions yeah yeah I, I do appreciate everybody for tuning in too shout out tone tone definitely tone. Shout out the Tone Deaf Network, Sorry. level one gaming family. Um, he didn't gave us so many chances. We should have been on yeah, unemployment, yeah. I, bro. <laughs> I I think he's secretly done with us. It's okay though. 
We're gonna shoot him this episode link and see if he's like completely done. We ain't gonna even say that. We just gonna say yeah, that. I'm gonna just email him. <laughs> he gonna be like, new number, who this? And I'm like, man, my bad tone. So, um, you but know yeah, what it is. Trevor, Flamser, Brian, uh, Johnny Man, everybody, thank you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We will be more consistent and our debauchery and haberdasheries will, will be and, back. And, and um, yeah, haberdashery. <laughs> but I'm gonna just stop because it's getting awkward. Yeah, uh, much love, guys. You guys have a good night. Try to share. Peace. Peace.